to convert it. All right, we're going to do some marked hands. Everyone's marked hands except for skates. All right, here we go. Um, Ace queen, easy raise. This is back in the days when I was a three big blind raiser. These are old hands. Um, and uh, the stakes here are, oh, this is $2. This is the $2 fast game. So this, this is big money for me, for us. Yeah, 200 NL. This is 200, 200 NL. 200 NL. 200 NL fast where I both made all my money and lost all my money. All right, we get called by the big blind. We flop top pair. So let's let's think, let's let's talk first about some qualities of villain 20, broken stack. Um, villain 20 is a broken stack. And these, and this, uh, salt and these um, HUDs are, are meaningless, they're not him. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so we, we do have a little bit of information about- We do. Our, we know that he's probably recreation. Yep, we don't have any reason to think he's a short stack specialist. We have actually every reason to believe he's not a short stack specialist because if he was, he'd be he'd get out of here and come back with his thirty because he can. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Um, so we want to bet this. Uh, there's nothing about this board that says bet bigger. So bet the two, get called. Lovely turn. Yeah, we just continue to bet. We beat all his other queens. He has queens. Um, if he, if he continued with diamonds, um, we might as well bet bigger now. We want it. We don't mind getting all in against his forty-seven. I think with with top pair, top kicker. Um, if we bet eleven, that's going to bring the pot to thirty-three. So that'll do it. We don't want to, yeah, it's going to be too big a, a bet if we only bet 75%. So maybe we should overbet here. I didn't know about overbets yet. He calls. And the king. Ah. Uh, so, um, my first thought here is that this is an underbluffed node. It doesn't necessarily always fold, but this is an underbluffed play. Yeah. 10 jack came in, king queen came in. Both of those are in his range. Sets of sevens, nines, and not deuces, but sevens and nines could play this way. Would they? I think sevens and nines would probably fast play this. Um, maybe less so with a broken stack. He's going to feel less need to get the full stack in. Um, Yeah, I think it. I, I think you just overfold here. I mean, he's going to have a. I mean, so what? What would his bluffs be? I mean, it's you know. So first question I would ask myself here is: Is this a pure bluff catcher? I think the obvious answer is yes. Yes. Like, be, this is a bluff catcher. So then the answer, the second question becomes: Is this um, an over or under bluffed play? So, 2x pot is underbluffed. And also, the, I mean, the River Donk is important, I think, too. Yeah. Um, River Donk is underbluffed, but I believe that it is not underbluffed by broken stacks. Ah, I, I, would have taken, I would have taken the opposite. I would have thought it would be more underbluffed with the broken stack. So, here's... Here's the thing that I looked at. I said, when Louis said, just fold to all the, just fold to big bets on the river. No, people don't bluff enough. And what I put as my asterisk is fold to, you know, fold to big bets on the river unless they feel desperate. Okay. And desperate, you have to define and it's, it's there. This does have a desperate feel to it. But you're beaten by, you're beaten by, King 10. So I just think, number one, like Larry said, I think this is uh, like an under bluffed line. So we have to fold it. When you get here. Number two, there are just aren't any natural bluffs anyway. Like I just, there's hardly any, I mean, think about what your natural bluffs would be. What, uh, eight, 10, uh, ace, nine of diamonds, ace, seven of diamonds, 
I can't think of very many more. Yeah, yeah, those Jack, are them. Jack Ten gets there. Uh, King Queen gets there. I mean, I we know. I I would say I would high frequency say you're going to show us a bluff here. That's why you're bringing it to us. But um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I didn't remember the hand or no, but yeah, that. <laughs> so, but yeah, this is this is that one, and yep. So I, then, I have that, my new favorite. So I put my new favorite flowchart in mm -hmm. uh, chat. Okay. Which um, so this guy Tombos who does webinars for GTO Wizard and sometimes the right. YouTube sometimes they won't. Um, he had a really good bluff catching session and he used this flowchart, um, which I I think is useful. Um, it uses the example uh, of pot odds in part of it, but you know. Uh, hopefully you guys will find it of use. I really respect the work, that, the presentations that Tom Bose does. So, uh, I and I really liked his his bluff catching seminar that he gave. Okay. So hopefully you guys will find it useful. All right. So now with this one in mind, uh, they make a two x pot river bet. So this so this number is going to be different. Do I beat their value hands? No. Do I beat their bluffs? Yes. Are they bluffing at least? Now it's got to be um, forty percent. So it's it'll be in your it'll be in your um, replayer. Just we can do the cheat sheet. Right. Okay. So let's do that here. So go back one. So forty percent. Right. That's what I said. Yes. Yeah. So they're they bluffing forty percent of the time. Was the number. <laughs> And the answer is we don't know on this player. And then we get to the last piece of the flow chart. Do I, uh, do I block their value or unblock their bluffs? Let's look. I block their queen king value. Yeah. Which is in their range, but I block that. I block top set. I unblock jack 10, which is nuts. I unblock the jack ten, the ten eight, or in this case, the jack eight. It's broken stack equivalent. All right. So there's my hand. All right. Who's got a hand? I got an interesting hand. I think. Mm -hmm. I hope. Yeah. Um. Oh wait. Um. Oh. Let's th do your hand, and then let's throw this one into solver. Quick. Um. Okay. Huh. Um, I don't know if it's going to be in the solver. I we, yeah, I don't even know if we have a short stack solver. So, um, but we don't, well, we don't have solves, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't have solves. So it, that's just, I think, we thought. Yeah. But we could try. You know, okay. Well, that's the thing is, um, did, did, there was some short stack cash, but I don't know if any of us have it. Let's do your hand. Okay. Um, so ignore where the button is. It's well known global. Bug. Uh, here's our small blind and then one, two, two. Right. So big blind open. So we've got a multi way hand. Right. Uh, and we get this flop. What are you guys doing here? Uh, Larry, real quick. I'm sorry. I was looking away trying to see if we I'm had. Mixing, a, I'm mixing but... check. I'm missing. I'm mixing check and bet. Um, the bet size is still going to be a third. Okay. Uh, Mike, yeah, we uh, ignore the ignore the button. I understand. Yep, I know the global poker replayers kind of bogus <laughs> sometimes. So yeah, we're under the gun. We raised, got called in one spot, two spots. Gotcha. Yeah, I think I think we're gonna check a lot here. Yeah. I mean, uh -huh. there. I think there's this tension between uh, protection bet and uh, just checking. But I think generally this is a check range. In theory, this is a check range. Texture out of yep. position. Yep, I agree. So, I'm not sure I want to check raise this or check call this. And if it goes bet raise, we might even need to fold this, which is horrifying. Checks around. This is not a great card. No. A lot of aces around here. Yeah. Um, so, this is where the hand gets interesting. So, I decided against this. I put it LOL, of course, in, in chat. 
to the size. Uh, I think we get to call this when we've got a gutter. Mm -hmm. um, especially against the widest range, but it kind of sucks because we're in the middle of the sandwich because this guy's getting yeah. lots of things in. Yeah. And but maybe know. I'm wrong. You guys do get that. So I think, you know, our long lost uh, Joey would, would fold this. I think. Yeah. I'm not sure, though. I'm not sure. We haven't seen a second player involved. And the thing that's have... most important to me is that we've got the ability to improve to the nuts. Yeah, that's that's the point. And I think with the I think I would fold this if we didn't have the ability to to improve to the nuts, but I think that is enough to call. All right. Unfortunately, we also have that 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 evil seven of spades that could come. Uh yes, that's true. One of our ounces dirty. Yeah. So um, we call. Call here. And very so we got two. Oh. We've got two callers. And now <laughs> now we've got four to a straight. We have and a bluff catcher. Three to a flush with a set. Yeah, we have a bluff catcher. And we get this bet size. We get a blocker bet. And we have someone to act behind. This is yeah. This is just terrible. Um I know you don't raise. Yeah. I would call and be done. Yeah. Call if you get raised behind. You just wasted 10 big blinds. So can we agree that we just can't fold a set here to this size? You can fold a set. I don't think I don't, but you don't have to. You I, think it, yeah. I think it involves a lot of this guy's. Yeah. If he wasn't there, it's easy. Yeah, well, it's easy. This, but this guy's. Um, I mean, I don't. This is an unknown, so I don't. I don't remember if he had any particular. Yep. And when you call, you behavior. cap yourself. Yeah, I think we got a call here. I think our hand's too far up in range. Yeah. So we, we do beat value still. I mean, they can do this with a better set. And they can have those sets. They can do it with. They can do it with Ace Nine. Yeah. It's kind of weird to do it with Ace Nine, but they can. Um, they could have worse sets. I don't think they have aces, though. No, no, not aces. I'm saying that you beat a lot of. You can beat value. Oh yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, I see your point. Sorry. Yep. Um, yeah, I, and I think that maybe gets a bigger sizing. This becomes an interesting conversation. Like if this guy bet, why don't we go through that exercise real quick? If this guy bet a B seventy five. Well, he's supposed to bet pot. In 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 DTO world, that's this yeah. is pot. Okay, well, let's say pot. What do we do with what do we do with this combo that's pop? Cry. Yeah. Uh, I know it's it's a kind of an interesting spot, right? But it's, it's one of the things we're all in. He's bluff catcher. He bet into two people twice. I think I may not be good enough to fold this even to pot. Yeah. But I think what's this on this side of the thing, I think we're beating value. Yep. But I think um if he bets pot, it's almost that's like more of a bluff catcher finish. So anyway, okay, I call. Right. To me, this is all the right call. How bad does it get? Got two pair, and you don't. This guy's right. smart enough to hide it. Okay. Awesome. Um. Okay. So. Stop it. Right. Anybody else got a hand? Oh yeah, you know I got them lined up, baby. Put them up, Mike. Put one. <laughs> all right. I, and again, I just kind of took them from my bucket of marked hands. I'm not even sure yeah. what they were. This one was pretty recent, though, based on the date. So let's see what we do. Okay, we got a limp fest with a broken stack up there. A couple broken stacks. Uh, we this get is a very interesting spot. Attack! Yeah, my my uh, default would is to raise here, and it's going to be pretty big. Seven at least. Seven to seven and a half. Nice. So then we get one call. So broker stack calls you. Yeah. So this is now, so now you got a weird SPR. Yep. So weird SPR, we got a flop that's going to have a shit ton of, you know, C betting from our end, you know, with our range. Right. Do, our, do tens fall in there? Do we want to... 
C-bet tens here. I think tens only fall in here if you're C-betting range. Everything about the tens um, is not a bet, except if this is a bet range spot. So, I mean, he's got a bet range spot. I can tell you that because queens wouldn't bet probably. Then tens don't. Then I wouldn't bet. I think you might start getting bets with lower pairs maybe as bluffs or, you know, protection. Yeah. I don't know, guys. I mean, I feel like we're talking about theory a little bit here, but our ranges are very far off theory, right? Because we've got yeah. an overlimp range and we've got an ISO range. Yeah. And not think, there's one easy way to play it. You bet seven or eight. If you get a call, you're done with a hand, and that's the size you lose. You know, it's that it's that thing we're not supposed to do is I bet to find out where I was. All right. But you can. Well, I would bet here. I mean, I think I think you all have really good. I mean, this is a margin of definition of against yeah. a cap range that still possesses a lot of aces and a lot of kings. Um, yeah, it's very hard to define what his range is. Um, but I think I still bet here. I'm a little bit maybe. I'm, I might be too aggro in ISO pots, but I, I mean, you're declaring essentially. This just smacks your. Range. This, I would use it. I would use a bigger size. If this seems too small to do what you want. You, I don't think you get any information from this bet. Yeah, that's a good point. I would. I would even. I would go ten. I would bet half five. Yeah, but maybe you get raised, and then you fold. So you're thinking actually size up, Larry? Yeah. Yeah, but I might be. I mean, I'm, this is a entirely exploited. I mean, I've talked about it before, but. Um. And some other people that I talked to about him, they're like, no, that's stupid. But <laughs> Jeremiah Williams is like, well, I'd be 50. So I think that Jeremiah would be 50 for a reason. One maybe that I can't enunciate, but I think it makes sense. I can enunciate one version. I want to bet a size that causes them to fold their weak shit and raise their strong shit. Yeah. All right. Mark Goon in the house. Yeah. So, so they didn't do either of those to this no. bet. No, that's the that's the problem. Yeah. That, that, so this is so what so what Scott just said. Yeah. Bigger size is going to is going to often have them polarize their range. Yeah, and you 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 just you just you know nothing now. You don't know if you're up against an eight. You don't know if you're up against hearts. You don't know if you're up against a weak king that will fold to continued aggression. Or an ace that has decided I have 40 big blinds and I'm never folding. But now you have a draw and all of his draws now beat you. I mean, all of his uh, all of his Broadway draws now beat you. That's what I meant to say. So, check? Or yeah. bet? Check. Um, I would have bet. I would have, I would have true speed bluffed this. Okay. Yeah. okay. What size? I would have gone. So I went four, and then now it's twenty-eight. I would have gone like fourteen. Okay. I don't hate that. Check is good. Um. Now I think you're just in the check. You are so dead. You're in the check mode. We just pray he checks. Yeah. Unfortunately, he's going to check it. Nice. Yeah. You realize your equity regardless of the, of the result. Sevens. Nice. Phew. Yeah, so you would have gotten there either way. I mean, yeah, I, I take a rather aggro line in this situation. Um, and, you know, it's because it's... He could have turned those sevens into a bluff. Yeah, he could have. But, you know what? Problem. He's a broken stack. He's over the Right, so he didn't do that. Okay. And when he limps behind pre-flop mm -hmm. and then calls a pretty significant raise, yeah. We and this might have been what I was going for here, like this he's flooded with these small pairs. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't really realize he's got the he doesn't have the implied odds to set. Right. But he does have but he's all he's littered with small pairs and suited aces. And occasional, an occasional suited connectors in the 
10 jack range. Yeah. Maybe one piece of information to think about is that if he's littered with suited aces, the ace of hearts is a very important card. Because that's blocking his most obvious front door flush runs. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That was a hard hand. Um, yeah, that was a tough one. Arturis, do you have a hand open? I sent it in chat. Oh, you sent it in chat. Okay, I'll grab it from the chat. Uh, it's, or you it's can just share the screen. Your, your choice. Uh, let me close this. Okay. I don't know if it's even interesting. I'm just okay. watching. I'm not seeing it in the chat. Why am I not seeing it in the chat? There I it is. It as a... Okay. I'll... All right. I got it here. Let me open it up. Open file. Here we go. I'll play it. Sure. There it is. All right. So you got King 7 in the um where's the button okay i see the button it, it, it looks like there's a post maybe or limp okay that's the limp it starts at the limp all right so the limp limp king seven check i like um yeah see the flop get this great Check check, 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 check. Nope, check, check, 200. Check, check, over bet. 200 into one. So what's your SPR here? Your SPR looks really large. What's your SPR? I don't know. You're doing well. Like, so let's see. What's pot right now? He's got 2,000. He's got 2,000. Um, very, very so it's 10 to 1. So you have an SPR of 10, right? No, no. I'm sorry. The pot's 350. Um, so no, it's 150. Before his, bet. before his bet, we're at 150. It's a So it's SPR 15-ish. Yeah. So you've got... Oh, yeah. SPR because this guy's got it's 12. So yeah. you, it's like 50. Big so SPR matters a lot here because the value of your hand is in its supply dots. And your supply dots are big. And so against uh, Marangaz, so I'm sure I'm just going that name. I apologize. Um, you've got the SPR to continue. I think you continue. Did Mar Marangaz hasn't called yet? Yeah, uh, you have a good point. Okay, let's, well, let's continue. Let's call. Let's see what's okay, Marangaz. Calls. So it's against the two thousand. So you've got an SPR seven. You've got an yeah. SPR about seven and a half. Seven. It's around seven. Um, ah, so we see that's pair seven. He over bets. Um, so you're 32%, about 30%. To, I, think I think we have call to one. We have to gore. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Is it gore? Call. How do I say this? How do I say this word? Finish your work, little girl. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, we well, have to go. All right, I'm going to mute Corey for a second. There we go. All right. So most of us agree that, that we're going to gore, right? Well, oh, I see what you mean, gore. I have yeah. no I idea. Mean, it's Turkish. I don't read Turkish. Okay. There we go. <laughs> oh, you, you kept asking. Gore. I had no idea what you're saying. Right. Okay. Now we Kabul. <laughs> okay. And he checks. All right, so he checked turn, right? So the question is, do we do we bluff this? So he do you think your do you think your uh, do you think your king high ever wins against the limping range that overbet pot on river on, on flop? No, okay. no, and I think that he checks back a lot of value on that turn to the four liner. Yeah. Money that he point. might not fold. Yeah, that's a good point. Um well you're always calling a nine. 
Um, I, I think you, I I think well yeah I think giving up is fine, but I think you can bluff this too. Yeah. All right. So with the bluff, let's in in our little bluffy flow chart, we block the absolute nuts. That's we good. Do. He we doesn't. Block, have we block value, um, but we don't unblock any auto. -fold. Right. His auto folds. I guess we do unblock it. No. <laughs> well, he's going to auto fold. He's auto folding his his dead king. I mean, you know, he's auto he's auto folding king. Yeah, he's got a massive range because he's next. The auto folding king ten. I don't know. This is Turkish lira. I bluff him off King 10. 10 King 10 is something. Um, our King blocks King Queen, King Jack, King 10. That's good. Yeah. Um, Blocking is King Traps. That's good. The nines, which he has very rarely, we do not block. 9 7 is. is yeah, nine, seven, king, nine. Those don't exist really that way. So, do we ever win at showdown? No. If you bluff, yeah, I think you have to bluff big enough to get. You got to bluff big enough to get a jack, a jack to fold. So I think your bluff has to be six fifty, seven fifty. Yeah, I would. I also that. want to get called by two pair. You want to get I'd called? I don't bet like. I don't bet like B one fifty or B one twenty five thousand well. Yeah, and you're gonna go to you just bet four hundred. Yeah. You're gonna. I mean, his auto folds will fold, but I just don't know that you're. I don't know that you're getting a jack to fold for, for four hundred. I mean, okay. and the jack is like two pair now. And he, he gored, he called. All right. He's limping, limp trapping kings. Limp trapped kings. One of the hands. Yeah, I mean, so the way, one way to think about it is that you want your bluffs to match your value. So if you had being nothing here, what size would you bet on your? Well, you don't have ace king here because you didn't raise preflop, so you have to have a nine. I said, yeah, I said king nine. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Okay, yeah. But you're going to have because it's the limp pot, right? You're going to have all. You're going to bet pot. But yeah, nine. I would have yeah. gone bigger just because I would want. I I want a rep that I have a straight. Yeah, I like it. Actually. Okay, now let's now let's talk in let's talk in hungry horse language on this river, in, to the best of our understanding, which is. If your value wants to bet only pot because it wants to get called by a queen and a jack, then your bluff does not block, does not match your value. It does the opposite. Your bluff wants to bet big because it wants a queen and a jack to fold. So there's that theory. I don't know that you're ever getting pocket kings to fold here. Yeah, yeah. They, he blocks ace king he doesn't block the nine he beats all your queen he beats some of your value yeah so the way I suggested running the, doing the hand I think you just lose more money on, in this particular case anybody else have a thought we can't, yeah, we can't you, we're not solving think, yeah um, yeah I I mean, so Hungry Horse is going to say bet small, right? To fall out as auto folds. Uh, no, we, we don't know. We know that Hungry Horse is going to say you bet the opposite of what you do with, with your value here. But I claim that the value wanted to bet pot or smaller because it wants to get called by a queen. Yeah, I think Hungry Horse would have some blocker sizing here for, for bluff. Yeah. Small investment just to get auto folds to fold. Right. Like is... Especially in a limp pot, like his six. What, what does he have that is his auto fold? 
six four. You beat six four. It's true. So I guess we check. Yeah, something he doesn't like bet six four like or seven, Ace four. seven eight on the flop, right? Mm. If you like really has like queen seven or better. Right. That's that's my that, that that's where my that's where my bluff sizing comes from. That's that's the the, the argument about it. Don't know if it's right. I think Hungry Horse's argument is that he often will use he often argues for small bets to fill out the portion of the range that isn't all that's really Okay. No. All right, who's next? I got deuces. And I'm in the big blind with my deuces. Quack quack. Quack quack. All right. <laughs> Let's just move these out of the way, unfortunately. There we go. Okay. Kill it. Ducks, come on, kill it for us. All right. Here we go. The ducks get a raise, and against the low jack, um, these are mostly a fold, but they do have some uh, calling. You are super deep stacked. Oh yeah, I'm deep enough. Oh, I'm super deep stacked. This is a yeah. Call. Mike's got a good point. Super deep stacked. This is a call. I agree. I didn't even see that. Uh, but it is a three big blind bet. But we call. All right. We should be check fold mode. Check. Now, the, the one reason to bet is that if a six or a queen comes off, we lose, and we're ahead now. But we check, 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 bet. Still got a fold, right? I think it's fold. Yeah, just got a fold. I think I think you're okay to fold, but I think you can also lead. Right. I think you can lead turn. Yeah. Yeah, to the ace king. So yeah, yeah, you get some leads. I think you get some leads in the repeat five. Yeah, and that's what and I and I was thinking about that there. And also okay. you get leads on the repeat five more against UTG because his range is more well defined and has less five X. Right. Let's solve this one real quick. Okay. All right, we can do that. All right. And we'll go on to the next hand, which is uh Larry's got a hand, but Larry's solving. So Mike, you go and then we'll do Larry. I will stop share. Hey, I got a, I got a hand as well, man. Hand, really? I okay. I, I don't have it. I don't have it like on the computer. I just want to talk it out. Okay. Um, I will type in the chat the, uh, the steps as you go. All right. My man. So here's what I'll do. I'm going to open up a, a. I'll share my screen. There we go. Share screen, and I will type in what you say here. All right. I'm ready. Oh, well, I wasn't trying to jump the line, though, man. Is it no, my don't, turn? No, go ahead. Go, Corey. You're in the perfect spot. We're ready. Okay, okay. So uh, do I need effective sizes and all that? If you got them, whatever you got. Okay, so I'm playing effective 190. Everybody else has got me covered by gobs. You know what I mean? Like, there's there's okay. a couple couple guys with about 1,500 2Gs on the table, the guy. So I got uh, kings under the gun. Uh, hey, can, I, can I ask a question? Could, quick? Yeah, I have questions. Are, is this 190 big blinds or is it 190 dollars? What's the stakes? Oh, I got 190. It's one two, but like I say, I, I preface that with San Antonio one two play. It's 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 uh 75 percent match the stack. Gotcha. So you, you got, know, so you the one two one twos play more like a two five. Gotcha. So you've got about 380 dollars. On the table. No, I got one. I got one ninety. Oh, one ninety dollars. Okay, so you're at one hundred ninety dollars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't blind. do big blind. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, wait, hold on. This is a hundred big blinds. It's one two, right? One two, correct. One two, and you've got so, you bet got like ninety three big blinds or something. Ninety four big blinds. Yeah, yeah roughly. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Roughly. Okay. So ninety four okay, big so blinds effective in this hand, right? Ninety four bigs effective, right? So I uh, got. Limp from under the gun. I make it fifteen, which is really low out here. I make it fifteen. I so, get five callers. Oh God. Okay. One two. There's a limp. One two. Under gun. And limp under the gun. 15, you make it fifteen. 15. Right. Which yeah. Is a size and the fact that you get a, a mountain of callers means you certainly didn't bet too big. And unfortunately, no, I didn't. Now, the, and that's the thing. Like, and then just running this by y'all, I don't want to over talk anything. But we like you can bet. You can it can be one, two, two limpers, and you can bet fifty and get four callers, including the limper. That's insane. okay. In that <laughs> case, if, if that's really true, then with King King, 
you yes. should bet 50 and not 20. I, and that's what I was thinking, man. I should I should have bet higher, but yeah. for myself, because I'm fairly they that have a fairly tight image and I want to keep that. And my normal, my standard raise is 11 bucks for whatever I got. I only made it 15 because I had a limper. Right. If I come in, I open half the time because I want to stay balanced, but I'm trying to figure out, right. should I just play bigger and just get in there with them? You know what I mean? So here, here's the thing. We, we got to assume, we got we to gotta say that your assumptions are right. First of all, in a game where there's lots of limpers and people do not fold to, you know, to 5X, 10X, and 20X opens, then you do not need to be balanced. My man. Does that make sense? You can throw oh, perfect out sense. The against these players. Got you. Got you. Because they're not even paying attention to that anyway. They're playing they're, so bad. You just want to. They're making this time. mistake. Right. Yeah. So if you don't have to be playing balanced and king, and you're going to get multiple, then, then I think your open raise size changes completely. I think you ask a completely different question than the solver will ever ask, which is you, you look at the table and you watch and you go, what raise size tends to get heads up. There's yeah, this that, he hit it on the nail. Right. Okay. And whatever that size is that tends to get heads up, you start thinking, this might be my standard raise size. It may Can I add something good. to that, Scotty, real quick? Yeah. So, Corey, the, the one thing that made this obvious to me once I saw it is that, okay, so if I'm heads up and I have aces, my equity against the great majority of hands is like 80, 82%, right? So I'm going to win that hand 80, 82% of the time. However, if I have aces and I'm up against two other people and it's multi-way, my equity drops to 60%. So I'm going to win only 60% of the time. I'd much rather win 80% of the time than 60% of the time. So I'm really, really motivated to make this ISO to the limpers so big that I'm going to Right. And Got against you. players, by the way, you're not even you're not even the favorite in the hand anymore. Got you. Oh, 100%. You're, less than 50%. 50%. you're the favorite in the hand. You're, you're going to win the hand more than anyone else, but it's less than 50 percent of the time. Now, Got you. Makes sense. You gotta be, but, but I want you to be really I want you to observe and you don't need to put any money in the pot to do this. You just need to start watching and see really how often does that that raise in a one two game to 50 mean that you're getting multiple callers. Okay, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. It just, it, now that just depends on table dynamics, you know what I mean? Exactly. So start but it's watching. not unheard of, you know right. what I mean? So Sure, but start yeah, watching gotcha. how often that is and seeing is there a size that, that tends to be heads up and keep that in your mind. I don't know if that's always going to gotcha. be your size because you're not trying gotcha. to play like the bad guys. But in this particular hand with the king-king, if 50 doesn't get folds from the whole table, then go 50 and get against one or two players at 50 with kings got and, you and the other thing is and play play your suited connectors and stuff as a limper limp along with them when they you know you know get in the limping party with suited aces and suited connectors this is completely different than the way that poker is taught this is a, this okay. is a super exploit against these guys this is what i think the exploit is and i'll let everybody else say what they think it is got you play the limping game with them with hands that make the nuts not the offsuit not not jack 10 offsuit OK, you know, I'm talking the, the suited connectors, maybe even a suited gapper and all the suited aces. And when you get raised to the dis, the, the inordinate size they do, you fold. So you yeah. least a lot of one big blind to them. And if and when he and when he raises to 20 and gets three callers, don't play along with that. Don't get just in there. Get up, and yeah, you you you. Yeah. You see flops for when the limps get around, just like them. You play the limping game with them, but when someone does the raise, and we're assuming the raise is going to be oversized, you don't make the mistake that they're making with the oversized raise. And when you have your real value hands, you smash it okay. with the oversized raise and force them to be in there with money and try to do it bigger than they do to be he to not be multi-way with those, if you possible. And if there's yeah. no way to not get multi-way, then... Uh, then just inflate the pots that you that you have the most money in and be willing to fold. So you raise your ace king suited, and then you fold when you don't hit it, and you raise your kings, and you, you know, if you're if you're super multi way against kings, you just go, I probably need a set to win, if multiple people are in. So let's go on with this hand. Now, having said that, so fifteen normally I think is is, is great from your thing, but given what you said, much bigger, 
only because of, only because you of what you said. Gotcha. Right. That makes Go a lot. That's that's how I would like to do it. Sometimes I just like I said, man, I didn't have enough cojones, man. Right. right. So so uh, and then hold on one calling. second. Hold on one second before you go on with the hand. I made my speech. Does anybody else have a speech of what they think the exploit is at this table? I think you hit it. Mike, Arturis. That was pretty good. Anybody got a different idea? Okay, go on with the hand. Okay, so flop comes eight. Eight of, I think it was the eight of clubs. Mm -hmm. Six of hearts, five of hearts. Uh, guy donks into me for 40. There's 105 in the pot, I believe. Mm -hmm. He donks in for 40, and I fold. You're the immediate, you're the immediate, you're, you're to his, you haven't seen what anybody else does. You have all the people. Nobody, behind. yeah, under the gun, donks into me, I fold. Gotcha. How big is the pot? How big is the, the pot? pot 105. 105. So, I think think you have to lose $40 more to see what happens behind you, I think. And my thinking was, I ain't gonna lie to you, my thinking was, because I only have 175 behind, Yeah, I'm either true. jamming or folding. Yeah. But I'm scared to jam in that position, because I got, I'm, I'm jamming in the five people, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 This and is then, like, that board, there. that board's so wet, there's no turn that I want to see. I only have two outs, you know what I mean? Oh, I have an idea. Scotty. I have Scotty, an idea. Let, Scotty, share my, let me share my screen. Okay, you share your screen. You got to, there we go. There we go. So just so we can see. And just, it's also just so that Skate can see this. Right. Uh, Corey, you can see this. I, like, this okay. is how easy it is to enter a hand at easyreplayer.com. I just put it all in as you were talking. So easy oh, well, replayer. Well okay, done, gotcha. man. Well done. Yeah. So it's no, just a no. kind of a demo, but now that we can see the action, I may have gotten the positions wrong, but you said we had a limp. Uh, we had a limp. You made it 15. We got, I'm not sure how many calls you said exactly. This is probably pretty close enough representation. Yeah, there was one more caller, big mind call. Yeah, big mind call. Big in there. Okay. Well, we get the idea. Yeah. Yeah. But he's going to make the it. Flop. We're going to see him make the entry. And you've got four people behind you. You have the king of hearts. Don't fold. No, I do. No, not I don't know what his suit. Hearts. He didn't say oh, what his okay, suit. Right. I do not. That, yeah, that was I what I was going to say. I do not have the king of hearts either. Then you fold. I think. Yeah, I think no. the way to do this is because you're not sure how to play it. This is how you split your kings. You go. Uh, some kings are going to call. Some kings are going to raise. Some kings are going to if I ever fold. And you go. Do I have the king of hearts? If you have the king of hearts. You don't fold. If you have. The, if you don't have the king of hearts, you fold. Yeah, I think you're right. And, I think the king and, of hearts. And is saying he folds all the time here. I think you call with the king of hearts. Yeah. Yeah. If I got if I got the king of hearts, I'm not gonna lie. If I got the king of hearts, I think I'm just gonna jam to these guys. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah, you, I think you know, I'm with my stack size. If we're playing, if I got a bigger stack size, then definitely I'll flat. And I think I might even flat without the king of hearts if I had a bigger stack. Okay. What um, what happens? What happened in the hand? Oh, so uh, it ends up. It ends up running out rags. No, I actually, it came Jack, Jack of Diamonds, King of Clubs. Oh, that's why you remember that. Yeah. I hit, hey. the, set on, I hit the set on the river. Yep. The guy, the two hands that end up staying in mm -hmm. was 9-8 offsuit and Jack-9. <laughs> okay. I was livid. Oh, I yeah. can understand why you're frustrated. Yeah. Yeah, so I was livid. So the one answer I think that we, we go back for is just pre-flop here. And, you know, obviously I gave the lecture about it, but um, just do everything you can to get this heads up. I mean, I you know what? I, yeah, I would, yeah, 50 bucks, 70 bucks. Find where the level is for this group to have a heads up. Right. Got you. Got but you. We're, again, we're assuming, we're assuming that when you said it, at 50, you could still get callers. That that's true. Well, well, I'm thinking. Yeah, I mean, like I say, that's it's and that's it's crazy. Like, uh, let me let me just give you. It's probably like a thirty percent chance of that happening. You see what I'm saying? But yeah, I yeah. really thought at that time. I mean, after thinking about it, like I should have went closer to twenty five, thirty five, somewhere in that range. But that's you know what I mean? and I think I think I think more on the thirty, more on the thirty, thirty five. 
because 25 is kind of like, oh, it's just one green bird. They'll throw that out there quick. You know what I mean? Getting into 30, 35, I might be able to get a, get it, get a heads up or at least three ways. All right. So um the the the, the poker theory says never is this. I mean, I mean, simple poker, you know, GTO, that's what I'm gonna say. Yeah, GTO yeah, yeah. does not have a raise to 30 here with Kings. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but we are we are making assumptions about super ex play that is way off GTO because of how they play and what's the best way to exploit them. And if if raises to 30 here and 35 and 40, don't fold the table often. Meaning I'm going to say, if you can raise this hand to 30 or 40 and you see a flop, let's just say 40% of the time or more, then I think that this is a great hand to raise to 30 and 40. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Yeah. That's like I say, 40% of the time that's going to happen. That's crazy. More than 40. But it'll be like, it'll be like, it'll be like, bro, I've seen, um, it just like I said, I don't want to talk too much. I, I dealt there as well. You know what I mean? So I've seen, seen a that? lot of hands there. Yeah. I've seen, I've seen pre-flop somebody make it 65, get four, get three callers and six, five end up winning the hand turns or straight six, five off suit. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you've got, so, so your, your exploit here is again, I'm just repeating it, which is, the biggest of hands, you make the biggest of bets and let them be in there with mistakes. You're going to lose a lot of those big hands. You're going to yeah, be yeah, yeah. Stack a, you're going to be losing your stack in this game a lot. Yeah, 100%. Right. But when you're when you're in with ace king, aces, kings and queens and you don't need to play nines and eights strong. You just never need to raise nines and eights this this thing. Every other everything below queens is a set mine. Got you. You know, um, gotcha. and you're going to be in those hands and you're going to get more of your share of those pots than them with them being in there with their five, six offsuit and their jack and their eight, nine offsuit. And the other guy had not jack, jack nine. You're going to be yep. beating his hands more of the time, but not, not 50% of the time. You're going to lose the pot most of the time, but when you win it, it's going to be four X you're, you know, you're going to have all their money in and gotcha. then, and then you follow along with them with with their play, which is I want to hit a flop, but you play the hands that are smart to do that. You don't ever have five, six offsuit. You have five, six suited. Yeah, 100%. And you don't have ace, five offsuit, which they do, and ace, eight offsuit. You have ace, eight suited. Gotcha, gotcha. And that's funny you said nines because a couple hands after those kings, I folded a pair of nines uh, from the low jack to a raise, and it was a huge raise, and the guy's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm looking for a set here. That's bad. I'm out of position. I got nothing here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mucked it immediately. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah. You're in there. You, you're in there. You're in there with little bet. You're in there with small investments pre-flop to hit giant hands against people who are going to pay you off. And you're gotcha. bloating pots where you where you have the lion's share of the equity, even though you're not 50% to win. That's it. Don't let them play perfect. Make them make mistakes. Yeah. Got I it. Think, I think those are the exploits. No, and you're you're right. I actually, yeah. I actually watched Jonathan Little had a thing that he talked about this, and then I watched another guy talk yeah. about this. When you're playing with those real loose, splashy tables, you're supposed to just load money in there with your big hands. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you're getting in the pots, you're loading money in there because you're yeah. just gonna cause them to pay you off. You know, but your variance is gonna go higher. But the variance is high here anyway because of how yeah. everybody plays. Exactly, and mm -hmm. and you. And Im imagine the following game, because this is what this game almost is. Imagine Hold'em played with no blinds. Gotcha. So we're going to play no limit Texas Hold'em, but there's no antis and no blinds. The I only ETO strategy is aces. to fold every hand except aces. Okay. Right? I mean, because yeah. why, you know, you because you can sit there all day and you just wait for aces. Okay. And it's, okay. It's almost that. If the raise sizes are thirty and the blinds are two dollars, you can just wait. Now, again, you don't wait for pure aces because, and I don't need to finish my sentence because there is a, you know, there are there are blinds there and there is a drop, so there is money going off the table. Okay. Do um, you want to look at this uh, solve? Hey, y'all yeah, would love. Yeah, we're ready. Yeah, let's see. No, it's not this hand. This hand can't be solved. <laughs> 
because yeah, we, no, can't, we can't solve this. But we'll let, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take a look at the solve with the earlier hand. Okay. All right. Um, okay. I'm going to show it. Um, okay. So well, I would like to. I would like to visit San Antonio and stay at your house. Go on. Hey, Corey, are the, are the people at Rounders excited or upset about the takeover by Doug Polk? Well, right now they're upset because the the lodge is going to come in. So the, it's going to change a lot. So y'all missed it. Like what happened is the lodge is going to cap these games. Oh, the only gonna, games they're gonna that they're going to have. The yeah, they're going to, they're one, two games. They're going to be capped now. And we do four car PLO bomb pots Whoa. that are uncapped. But oh, now God. the lodge is going to come in and they're capping the bomb pots at three hundred dollars, you a max you can bet in a bomb pot per player is three hundred dollars. Oh, so nice. a lot of the guys that want to gamble and stuff, they're fussing because the games are going to be capped, but the one three game and the two five game aren't capped. Right. So you just play ah. those. They're going to keep it where the one two games keep the you know the casual player, the everyday player, things like that, and then the grinders and all that. Y'all can go play one three. Y'all can play two five. Or we'll make a we'll spread a bigger game for you. So and then they enforce rules. Rounders was like a it was like a professional home game. Right. So, you know, you got uh, folding out a turn, you know, what I mean, stuff like they keep it to a to a, they, they they get on it if it's excessive. But it happens. Whereas the lodge is cutthroat. You fold out a turn, uh, one hand penalty there. We're not playing no games with you. You know what I mean? Okay. So, yeah, they're going to buck at first. But I think it's going to be better for the overall community. Mm hmm. Did you see yeah. Ben on Drew down there? Did he actually show up at all? Oh, yeah, I know Drew. Yeah, I know Drew. Drew, like the whole crew down there. Yeah, Drew, I actually, uh, when he first came down there, I also ran the barbershop there. So Drew came okay. in, get his hair cut. Yeah, Drew, Hannah, like all of those guys. You know what I mean? Okay, like cool. everybody in the San Antonio poker scene. Yeah, yeah. Because like I say, I worked there as well. And all I right. did the commentary for Rounders Live. So, you know, Fun. I'm, I'm, I'm right. around him. Yeah. All right. Cool. Okay. Right, let's take a look at this one. So, um, you, so, so, Surprisingly, you get some dunks on here. I have no godly reason why. It must be that you have, we're just going to ignore it. So but check. I don't have a donking strat that I need to know know about it. So I check. What hand was I, this? This is the repeat five. This is the, yeah, this is the five. When okay, I, the question I, was, can we donk the repeat five? You had a, this what, was when he had his hand, right? I have, yeah. deuces. I have deuces. Yeah, deuces. 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 Okay. Uh, we'll just make it, What I'll just say it's hearts. Is that good enough? Or five of hearts? Yeah. The question was, okay, so we do we do get donks on this repeat. Yeah. But not just, well, let's just look at hand class. Yeah. Filter. Not with second pair. And not with the low pairs here. Right. I okay. thought you would right. I, but these just have got enough. I guess they're just good enough to go to showdown. Right. And now he bets and then he bets and I'm and I assume I'm gonna fold them to the he bets uh he basically bets pot. That's five point six three into six point five. Uh so we'll try so both. Yeah, yeah let's, 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 let's. Uh you're supposed to hero call. Supposed to hero call and then at one twenty five. It likes to call more with the twos because it unblocks everything. Yeah, but I it, it likes to call here. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I I unblock three I unblock four the three four I don't know what I unblock. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean it likes calling the stuff. I don't know. I think that I think that you could probably overfold. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, Mike. Is it my turn? Uh, oh, it's Larry's turn. Yeah, Larry's got a hand. Um, okay, so I feel like this hand is a brag. <laughs> Excellent. So I'm, hey, I'll skip this hand. Oh, um, show us okay, this hand. I won't an analyze it. Just so this hand, so this hand is, I think, player dependent, right? Okay. Um, so we've got, I've got a red, red tag maniac in mm -hmm. 0625. Right. Um, Okay, we could obviously we can know where the button is, but mm -hmm. it's broken. So I you know, in theory we could do anything we want here. Right. 
Uh, we're always protecting our check range at a high frequency in this configuration. Yeah. And against the maniac, that's what I'm going to do. I like it. Because this guy is nutty. I think he bets this. So he chooses the pot. Yeah. You are so far ahead or so far behind. Yeah. It's kind of this is black or white, isn't it? Yeah. It could help. Yeah. So I think of this as a good card, right? Because Again, he's repping top of range with a pot size bet. Right? Yeah. He's repping seven, seven, three, eight, seven, eight, three, sevens of threes. Mm -hmm. This reduces his threes down to quads, one combo. Yep. And it does one other good thing for you it gives you some splits on the river. Yeah. Oh, that's a very good point. We yeah. also have more chops. That's a very good point. You're now chopping. On the right card, we're going to have chops. Yeah. So here is our first decision point, right? So check, check on turn. Do we value bet or do we check? Check. If he's yeah. a main check. Yeah, exactly. So uh, this is going to become, obviously I've set this up to be an easy answer, but we get the 4X pot. And so, you know, it's, this is not in game. Right now, looking at it with you guys, talking about how he's a maniac, seems easy to call. But in game, you know, a guy bets well, it's two X pot. But... It's it's not it's not easy at all. Um, yeah. In but retrospect, it's easy because like, doesn't it feel? I'm, but doesn't uh, it the feel player desperate? type I told you guys about? But what? But sorry. Doesn't that? But doesn't that feel like a desperate bet? So your desperate bet theory, I like, and I recall the other hand that we were talking about, where he also essentially bet two X pot, and he yeah. was. Robert Stack, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I no, so I, I have not used that classification, classification or thought of bets, um, you know, thinking of humans in that perspective, but I think it makes sense to start thinking about bets like that. Can right. you tell us a little bit more about the desperate bets? So okay. I, it'll, it'll cement in my mind a little bit as something I've taken. Okay. So here is the logic that's wrong. Don't do this. Don't look at the bet and say, well, if he had a three here, or he had pocket threes, or he had pocket aces or pocket sevens, why would he bet so big? Wouldn't he want to call? Don't do that because good players will crush you if you think that way. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Right. So we start with that. So he does have a 2x bet in his value. Right. That, that, that narrative is wrong. Now, having said that though, which is there are betting patterns that you look and go, it's not that you wouldn't bet this big. It's this also includes flailing. The now, desperate bet. You're going to be wrong sometimes about, about the flail. Sure. But he was, uh, so he is out of position here, right? Um, no. No we're, no, we're in position. This is oh, blind versus blind. Okay, this is blind versus blind. Um, wait a minute. I'm in okay. the small blind. Sorry about the mobile. You're in the small blind and he's in the big blind? Yes. Yes. Oh, player 17, 14 isn't there? Uh, no, he, he declined blinds. Oh, okay. I'll go over the, I'll, I'll go over the action again. Okay. He's so, not blind versus Thank blind. You. Okay, now I got it. Okay, there. Um, yeah, so he's in position and he checked he, he checked this turn um, to win. To induce, so what is what does he have here that wants to induce and give a free card to your spade draw? Ace three, you block the ace. Seven three, three suited. One combination. Seven seven. He certainly is going to have some checkbacks on his. Yeah, on his boats, right? I mean, so he's repping one. He's repping yeah. a house. Yeah, it's only, he's repping essentially seven three suited or ace three. Um, preflop you raised, right? Yes. Okay. Um, seven, three suited is not highly represented. No, but ace three is you block the ace, but let's, let's, I think we know that seven, three suited is represented blind versus five with humans. Okay. Um, there's only one combo. So it would combo. have to be seven, three clubs. Yeah. Yep. So my attitude here is like, 
So it took me a while to get to the call and I actually was like, I was like, so the way I was thinking of this, I mean, I mean, we, we had the bluff, you know, let's ignore the fancy Tombos bluff chart here. Yeah. For a second. Well, let's use it. It makes right. sense to use it. So what do we, so. Right. But also. Do we, what, are we bidding value? Do we have a pure bluff catcher? The answer is we are just have a pure bluff catcher, right? Yes. Yes. This is a bluff catcher. We lose to other eight. We lose to ace uh, jack. And so then the question becomes. Um, and do, yeah, so we beat the bluffs. Uh, and is he over bluffing at this size? And is he what's a player type? So the player type says, yes, he's going to have yeah. bluffs that he's capable of here. And also, the line doesn't make sense. Most people will bet. Some people, like the solver, the solver will check back a turn set here. But most people will bet a set on turn. So his line seemed incongruent to me. Yes. So. Yeah. I felt like it was a call. Bet, bet. I mean, if he bets, if, if he does bet, 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 bigger, 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 that doesn't feel as desperate. Yeah, yeah. Well, so I mean, obviously, yes, bet, are, and we all know bet check bet is a line that is more bluffed than yeah, other lines. Yeah. So yeah, I decided the hero, and he had absolute shit. Yep. He had a straight draw. Yeah. He had a got it. Yeah. You also. Oh, by the way, one other thing, you unblock spades. That's an important part. I'm not saying that yes, is an important. You part. unblock spades. Yeah, yeah, that is an important part. So right. we didn't talk about um, unblocking. Yeah, great. Bluffs, which we do. Yep. And, okay. and against Maniacs, hang on. And top and against Maniacs, yeah. With top top hammer, especially in this configuration, right? Yeah. Especially in blind versus blind. Yep, yep. All right, pass All it right. back. Skate's got it. Skate is next. All right, I think I got to share. All right. Yep, share it. Somehow you muted yourself. I have to unmute you. I'm going to tell you to unmute yourself. There we go. You're unmuted. All right. Okay. All right, I'm going to keep it unmuted. I think it's... Am I, am I sharing? No? You're not sharing yet. Are you on a Mac or a PC? PC. PC, control, shift, S. Okay, you got it. Got it. Look at it. Look at you with your connector. Yep. So, yeah, it's a weird hand. I lost some money in. Uh, we got a ace. Let's play it. You can step through it by clicking the little double arrow button. Yeah. Yep. So limp, limp to me. I open to kind of small. I should have went bigger, but. I think the, I think that this is a mistake. I think uh, against this number of players, you want to limp along with this. Limp along, yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is exactly. Raising, not bad. Yeah, it's not bad, but this is. I mean, we talked to the thing about with Corey. Um, Make it bigger. No, no, no. I'm saying the opposite in this one. This is exactly the kind of cards that you want in position to play multi-way, and you know, get a straight or a flush, two pair and trips, and everything. Yeah. Fold just that that's why you're there you don't need to invest more because it's hard to get five people to fold if they you know and and people who limp this much don't like to fold yeah and if so and the amount you have to invest and the amount you have to invest to get them to fold you might as well not do it so i want to car not counter but just give um skate counter. a little uh you know a little defense here um I agree. I would limp behind this hand too, but raising is not bad, not a bad decision. Yep. yep. Now I think you do have to make it bigger. I think your size is too small. Six. Yeah. The theory yeah. says it's got to be six, eight, 10, 12, 13. 13 is the minimum. Yeah. It's, you know, just a smidgen more, but I mean, my goal was to try to get a, a heads up and, you know, Yep. Play better post flop, but that didn't happen. Let's see what happens. Let's see. 
And you can step through it by clicking on the little double arrow. All right. Yeah. And I'll bet that this happens a lot. This um, where you get all the calls. Nice flop. Yeah. And actually, um, so yeah, but, so actually, uh, yeah, I think I don't know if it's going to show it, but um, um, he called as well. The hijack uh, called. Right. Okay. The flop. So, go. some of the flop. I got a pair plus a draw. Pretty good. Yep, we like that. This guy bets out kind of large. It was, he bets pot basically. Pot, pot basically. Yeah. And yeah, okay, yeah. So he folds. He told yeah. me he had a. Oh, I'll tell you later. Yeah. Um, and I, for some reason, uh, shove all in uh, against this pot bet. You know, um, that's uh, not ter that's that that's not terrible. Just take your equity. Um, pair I, plus draws. Yeah, you have a lot of equity. Yeah, you 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 can do this. I I think a call is better than a jam here, but hmm. there's nothing wrong with a jam here. Yeah, you yeah. Also call a pot size. I I, I want to call I want to call the you know, the the third of a pot bet that way. Yeah, we're. We're yeah we're 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 doing great, Arturo. Yeah, I we're was just trying to you know, fold equity. I was um. You might have some fold equity. Absolutely. I just, I just you know didn't imagine somebody limping uh ace king off uh, pre flop, but it happens. You know. Yeah, he might he, he might fold a king. He calls. Yeah, but you don't care the fact that it's ace king. It, it could be king. It could be king. Th uh, I mean, ace king is actually better for you than king three. So. Yeah. All right. I mean, yeah, it breaks out and I and I lose. All right. I think it's um, it's not it's not a bet. No, I mean, let's do let's do a quick calculation yeah. here. Um, also, hijack uh, limps queens yeah. supposedly. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Poker cruncher. Here we go. Poker cruncher. Reset all. We are five six of diamonds. He is ace of spades, king of hearts, something like that. Yeah. And the yes, yeah, similar. Is, and the board is king of diamonds. King, yeah, five what, of spades. Uh, king of diamonds, five of spades, and what was our two, other diamond? The two of diamonds. Two, yeah. All right. This is... You're the favorite. You piled money in yeah. as a, with, with a 2% edge. It's a thin edge. You were not wrong. Okay, okay. You know... So if you played this hand a thousand times in your lifetime, you would win money. Yeah. You'd have some you'd have some variance. <laughs> yeah. But okay. Way. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, your play was right. Oh. Now that doesn't mean it was so your play was perfectly fine. That doesn't mean it was optimal. Yeah. Um against someone who has against people who have queens and ace king in their limping range. Your five six is happier to see the flop cheap and get there to that flop. I think. And once the flop comes, calling isn't the worst thing. I don't know if it's yeah. You yeah. Know, you have you have enough to call and you have enough to and you have enough to jam. You're fine. You do. Yeah. At that, point, I, at that point you just you just don't fold. Yeah, I think you're right. Optim optimally, um, you know, I'm hoping for it to go back call, you know, then check the turn and then me realize and see the river. Yep. But yep. you also realized your full equity by jamming. True. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You said, you said give me my fifty one point two percent. 51 point 51.01%. All right. Um, so let me do this real quick. I'll call it right there. Um, so 1215, shall we end on that? Uh, shall we end on the hand where uh skate lost his stack? <laughs> it's up to you. You're okay. the boss, you're the alpha. Yeah, let's do that. Let's we're at 1215 now. That seems good. Um, next Monday is normal. Yes. Next Monday. Monday the 9th. Monday the 8th. Monday the 8th. All right. I'll see you guys Monday the 8th. Think about your, what's your completing range from the small blind. I'm going to think about desperation bets. Think about desperation bets. I think we had a little bit of a, a breakthrough there.
Bye, Bert. All right, guys. Great session. Thank you. Bye, Bye. Hey, tell us For what sure. we want to hear. Say the words. Right. Thank you, guys. <laughs> um, may the poker gods be with you all. Oh, thank Cheers, you. Cheers, so mate. <laughs> We've been blessed. Uh,